Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we are taking a look at a ship that has benefited quite a bit from the Commander rework and has, in my opinion at least, become an all-around much better ship than it was, obviously, two years ago now from when it was originally introduced into the game. And that is the Tier 6 Premium German Battleship, really a battle cruiser, Prince Eitel Friedrich. So the PEF, as I'll be calling it from now on, to save breath, was introduced two years ago in an event, I believe it was the Steel Monsters campaign, or whatever. It was an event ship you could get 100% for free, which I did ac actually obtain for free. Grinding out the event using the Gross Occur first, then I got the PEF out of it. And you could go back and go through the directives if you bought, I think, the Nerves of Steel campaign, I think that's what it was called back in the day. And you could grind out steel using it. Now, this ship was originally built as a tier 6 German battleship that was slightly different from the tech line and other German premium battleships at the time, like the uh, Tirpitz, in that it had good and accurate main battery guns. And obviously, back then, this was way before any buffs were even thought of to the German battleship's dispersion, so. That sounded pretty darn cool, and pretty good too, from what we saw from uh, pre-release footage of the ship. But then the ship came out, and it turns out it wasn't all that accurate. It was quite, uh, I would say, mediocre. Some, some people, when it was released, they overstated the inaccuracy of the guns. They were most certainly more accurate than, let's say, the Bayern's guns, but they weren't really what was promised, per se. They were better, but... Not what we thought we were getting. And the secondary suite was actually pretty decent. The problem was it had a very short range, even by tier 6 standards. But it did have good AA and good maneuverability. So if you played it like in Iowa, played at mid-range, shooting at opportune targets, it worked. It wasn't overly good or bad in my opinion. It was just kind of meh, but a lot of people hated the ship quite a bit and as an event ship event ships kind of have that uh, stigma around them that since you can get it for free it's gonna be a pretty terrible ship and if we look at the past records of that that's not entirely untrue we've got the Strasbourg this time around which is a Dunkirk at tier 7 with a gimmick that barely works half the time and like one second better reload and 0.1 better Sigma and you're expected to fight tier 9 ships with a Dunkirk so, yeah. But anyway, after all the changes that have happened in the past two years to the game, Prince Otto Friedrich has gotten a lot better, in my opinion. And I mean a lot better with the uh, buff to the German dispersion that we got, uh, I think almost a year ago now at this point. And then with the extension of the secondary range of all battleships now the PEF is pretty darn decent so the main battery guns let's tackle those first because that was a source of a lot of complaints from the original release of the ship she has a 350 which is 13.7 so almost 14 inch guns with a reload time of 28 seconds and a main battery range of 17.8 kilometers so decent range for tier 6 and while not the largest guns at tier 6 they aren't overly small it's just that you won't be overmatching anything because of that but again this is another aspect of the ship that gets overstated or i guess understated a lot people will complain that she has small guns they're, they're almost 14 inch guns they're not all that small in reality now they you know they're not 14 inch 13.7 but still they, they they pack a punch when they connect so um, they have a maximum damage on the AP shells of 10,500, and they fly out at 815 meters a second, so pretty decently fast for tier 7. And plus they have really good fire, uh, forward fire, uh, firing angles, not so much when you're retreating, so when you're going forward toward the enemy like you should in a German battleship, you've got some pretty darn good angles. Alright, so the secondary guns up next... She has 16 105mm guns, those, those dual purpose uh, guns that we see from here at, down at tier 6 up to tier 10 on the uh, German battleships. And she also has 
14 150 millimeter hull mounted swivel guns or uh someone told me what these guns are called they're i keep thinking palmer or uh something with a p i can't remember the word exactly but they're they're hull mounted guns these are the 150 millimeter guns keep in mind too these guns fire german hg so the 105s they can pin 26 millimeters of armor and the 150s can pin 38 millimeters of armor which is more than enough pin to pin just about anything you're going to see in the ships, with the exception of Tier 8 battleships and maybe a couple of Tier 8 heavy cruisers. So, yeah, it's really quite good. Now, like I said a couple of minutes ago, back in the day, they didn't really, they, they, they didn't really have the range to reach out too far from the ship. I believe you had like 5.5 kilometers maybe six if you built into it but now after the extension of the secondary battery guns firing range these guns can now reach out to 8.5 kilometers at tier six because for tier six ships they only got a 15 percent boost to the secondary accuracy but now with the new skill it's a flat 35 percent boost to the accuracy so this is e essentially a 20 percent boost to the accuracy of tier six secondaries so, yeah, that's one positive thing about that new skill. These guns just straight up got a range buff and add that on top of the buff to the main battery guns that Germans got about a year ago. Oh, yeah, this, uh, this ship got quite the kick for that. On top of that, too, the ship can go 29.4 knots with the speed flag on it. So it's a pretty fast ship. Not the most maneuverable because it is a very long ship. But very, very, very fast for tier 6. 29.4 knots, basically 30 knots in a tier 6 battleship. Now, on top of that too, her AA, which used to be quite good back in the day, uh, unfortunately, in CV rework and that went out the window, but I found over playing for the past week that sh her AA is decent to where when the CV player slips up, they will be punished quite badly for it, but again, if they know what they're doing, just like with any other ship's AA, it's pretty moot at that point. So, playing this ship... Oh, something too, I almost forgot to talk about her armor. So, another complaint is that she is squishy. Well, not really. I mean, kind of, but she has pretty much the same armor layout as the Bayern, her Tier 6 uh, tech line counterpart. And I'm talking about literally almost the exact same like take Bayern and like just compress it and stretch it out and you've got PEF they both have a 30 millimeter icebreaker bow which links up to a 120 millimeter plate that goes up about halfway up the bow and they have a stern plating that's 100 millimeters thick that almost wraps around the entire stern but doesn't and they both have 26 millimeters of bow and stern armor now, the Bayern does have a bit better deck armor. She gets sub 30mm and 40mm deck plantings on her central bits. Uh, the PEF has a huge slap, a slat of 26mm of deck armor on her stern and bow. But she does get 50mm of deck armor in the center, which that's quite good. But unfortunately, it does only cover the central bit of the ship. But, I mean, still, it's not terrible again from what it was made out to be back in the day add on top of that that the pef citadel is completely in the water so you can't citadel this ship from the surface unless it's turning hard over or you got some major plunging fire going on on top of that too there's not a lot of superstructure on this ship compared to other german battleships so again if you look at the Bayern, there's just like a whole city's worth of superstructure to hit on the ship and it sits pretty high up in the waterline too but then you put the PEF there and it's like barely anything in comparison so you've got that going for you as well so adding all those factors together she can be quite tanky in the proper situation high speed sits on the waterline hard citadel to hit the guns are much more accurate now than they used to be. The secondaries can get out now to almost 9 kilometers. Add all that together, you got a pretty solid tier 6 ship. 
Now, the guns aren't like pinpoint accurate. This is still a tier 6 battleship. But for a tier 6 battleship, the guns are pretty solid now. Of course, you won't be doing any overmatching because of the caliber, but if you shoot targets of opportunity, you'll be fine and get decent damage now. Now, for example, my averages in her back in the day used to be around 50,000, 60,000 a match, which isn't terrible for a tier 6 battleship, but isn't fantastic either. Now, after playing her uh, from about Wednesday through today, which is Saturday, and playing her quite a bit, I think I've racked up about uh, 15 games in her, I've gotten in the neighborhood of 70, 80,000 damage. The lowest damage game I had was like a 40,000 damage game, but that was a blowout match that lasted like literally five minutes. Um, especially when you, can, when, you, when you can bring those secondaries to bear, you really start racking up the damage, because again, all these secondaries can pin just about every ship you can see. And she hasn't lost any accuracy. And she just got more ranged out to where you don't have to get within suicide distance of battleships now and other ships that you want to hit with your secondary guns. Now, of course, the ship suffers tremendously from being up tiered. Because, you know, fighting tier 8 ships with 13 inch guns, heck, fighting tier 8 ships with 15 inch guns is pretty rough. So, obviously, if you have 13.7 inch guns, that's going to be very rough. But again, thanks to the German pins that the guns have, if something shows you broadside, you're going to hurt it quite a bit. Now, of course, with the German pins and the decent velocity, you will be overpinning cruisers a lot, but you'll also be blapping cruisers a fair, a fair uh, bit too if they show you broadside. And you can actually hit those broadsides now, unlike most other tier 6 battleships, which still have pretty shotgun accuracy for their guns. Again, you know, we're not talking about like the American, well, the New the, the Mexico just has frickin' 12 guns, so you don't have to be all that accurate with them when you're throwing 12 shells at the target uh, every, every, every salvo. So, yeah, all around, from playing her now, she's a really solid ship. Like, I know back in the day I said she was a pretty solid battleship, but even back then, pretty solid in a tier 6 ship, to me, was, again, doing like 50, 60,000 damage a match. But now, being able to do 70 to 80,000 damage a match on average, and I think the highest game I had in it was almost 100,000 damage. Um, it's like 95, 96,000. You know, I haven't had one of those amazing 120, 130,000 matches in a tier 6 ship. Which, I mean, for tier 6, that, that's, that's up there. That, that is really far up there for tier 6 standards. Um, Again, if you're talking about tier 6 standard, 70, 80,000 damage of matches is pretty solid, in my book at least. So she's a pretty good ship now. Um, so if you have her, take her out for a bit. Oh, I do, of course, have a full secondary build on it with Luchin, so that does help with, you know, having Luchins on there. When you get 100 secondary hits, he pops off that uh, secondary armament expert skill, and then your secondary is getting even faster reload time as well. So she's a pretty good ship now. Again, I'd recommend you guys to take her out, and if you have her, am I saying, like, drop what you're doing, go out and buy her right now? No. I just wanted to highlight this ship, because I haven't played it in, like, forever. I think the last time I played it was a vi for a video I did on her, like, a year ago. But she's really fun, and that's something, too, that we've kind of been missing in this rework. Playing all of low-tier matches now, it's a lot funner than playing tier 10 matches, or even t tier 8 and above matches. Because Deadeye is less prevalent, because battleships at this tier don't have the concealment to really use Deadeye. So things are still fairly close in, and the matches are mostly decent-ish. <laughs> Had a couple of blowout matches, but nothing again, nothing like what it's like at high tier now. And it's just fun, and I think I'm going to be playing a lot more of mid to uh, lower tier now to see what it's like. Except for the CVs. The CVs down here are, whew, they are really annoying. I had a double tier 6 CV match uh, when I was playing PEF and that absolutely sucked. But when they leave you alone, it's a pretty good time. I right, just wanted to share my thoughts on the PEF with you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 25,000 subs. We just passed 22,600 a few days ago and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Monday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.